to another squad cast on this happy Monday. I'm Kavil Salazar Hadway. Joining me as always is Steve Igbari. We got Aaron Caboose Coast. And we are welcoming, yes, Malik is back again as always, but he's permanently back as our fourth host. Congratulations. Hey, 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 hey. Thank you. You're stuck with me. You can't get rid of me now. <laughs> I know. Oh, but God. <laughs> yeah. uh, by saying, you don't finish watching WandaVision. I know. You cannot, you cannot have Rev, me back here. I'm sorry. It will be a problem. <laughs> I know. I gotta I gotta get caught up. But the good thing is is I can binge it now. I just wait until this next episode comes out, binge two episodes, and good. True. Yeah. That is true. That's you right. have to go like a week itching to find out what is happening <laughs> next or have that those songs stuck in your head for a whole week till you get another song stuck in your head. You just have the whole soundtrack. You don't know our amazing. struggles, Malik. You don't know our I know. struggles. <laughs> I, you we know, I'm taking it the easy like road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was so hard sitting on that couch and just waiting for the next episode. The um, withdrawals. <laughs> the withdrawals, real. I, I uh, remember someone mentioning. Oh, oh, sorry, yeah. I was gonna say, I remember someone mentioning like one of the biggest villains in the MCU now is the police stand by at the end of every episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It really oh, is. Brutal. It really is. Especially when you get to one of the later episodes and you're like, wait a second. There's something more sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I won't won't spoil it for Malik. He'll just have to learn the hard way. Uh, For all of you watching at home, no, we don't talk (laughs) about Disney Plus TV shows, although we love them and we love to binge them. Instead, we talk gaming and all of the gaming news that's happening in the industry because we like to nerd out about all of that stuff. And, of course, we break it down, give our thoughts, and we like to hear your thoughts as well. So... Uh, this week, we're going to be talking about Pokemon's 25th anniversary celebration, the PlayStation State of Play that happened uh, just this past week, EA and BioWare shuts down development for Anthem, yikes, and Valheim catapults to 14 plus million users. Wow, I that we got to talk about that because that's amazing. Uh, and of course, we want to know what you think at home. So let your voice be heard in chat. As well, if there's funny clippable moments, let us know through tweeting them to us on our socials at Squad State. Let the conversation start with Pokemon because, I mean, why not start with Pokemon, right? Sure. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Uh, yeah. And I just want to take a moment and just reflect. It's been 25 years of Pokemon. That's like... Yeah. Wild to me. Yeah. <laughs> like, just remember, yeah, just, just blows me away. Reese's time having my Game Boy Color and having yeah. the link cable and just finding my friends to plug it all in with. It, it's crazy that it's <laughs> 25 years. And really, the franchise have got like, I never thought Pokemon would be as big as it is, especially when Digimon came out as a competitor. I was like, Digimon's going to take it. I was wrong. Oh, man. Yeah man digimon, digimon is what i grew up on listen like I, I i watched a little bit of pokemon and i know like the basics but i did grow up on some digimon i i can't believe what a throwback yeah that is the thing, look, holy the only reason why digimon wasn't better than pokemon is because pokemon they just went hard with it they were like <laughs> look it. tv show video games cards yeah. everything and then everything. digimon just got on it too late Arguably, Digimon might have been better than Pokemon at the time, but we'll yeah. get into that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think uh, Tiger Slasher agrees with you, Malik. Uh, Digimon over Pokemon. Yes. Ooh. Right. <laughs> the hot takes have already the begun. <laughs> He's like, I'm just crying inside. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and to kind of just celebrate this, this wild milestone uh the pokemon company celebrated pokemon day this this past week um on saturday september february 27th and uh they did a uh, 25th anniversary uh, pokemon presents the day before and just kind of dropped some announcements and updates on uh new pokemon snap um i don't know how many people here are particularly interested in new pokemon snap but for me who grew up right in the age for the original which came out in uh the 90s for n64 that was a that was a game and an experience for me going going to blockbuster printing out the photos like 
oh man what a time and uh yeah th this new game kind of seems to just give us more of what we wanted it uh showed us a little bit of gameplay kind of talked about the different biomes they announced that there will be 200 pokemon spread across like eight generations uh that will be seen throughout the game they talked about an in-depth photo mode which i'm stoked for i love nice. a good photo mode and nice. it fits it fits with what they're what they're doing there um so yeah that one's coming out april 30th they're they're standing by that release date so not too far away from that game's release uh and then afterwards we got uh a remake um for po 2006's pokemon diamond and pearl is being developed by ilca rather than game freak itself they're uh okay. calling it pokemon brilliant diamond and shining pearl really i, I say that 10 times fast yeah <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> like, and then shining <laughs> call it diamond pearl shining the remake pearl. like that's that's just just keep it simple anyways <laughs> yeah <laughs> pearl. this for me, like personally, this was the era where I kind of dipped out of Pokemon because I kind of yeah. got sick of like the loop and they all the games kind of felt samey. So this, in terms of hype levels, this doesn't really do anything for me. I will say like the chibi style animations of the characters and the environments look cool, but I just don't have that nostalgic value to that game. Um, so I'm assuming that a lot of people are really nostalgic for that uh, fourth generation of Pokemon, but it's not really pushing the needle for me. I dipped out right after uh, Diamond and Pearl. Oh, so yeah, like, okay. I stuck. Yeah, so I stuck through for Diamond and Pearl, and I loved that game. I yeah. really like a lot of the changes that they made with it. Uh, but then right after that, like you said, dipped out, got tired of the same old formula. Um, but I'm glad that they're, I'm glad that they're remaking it because. I feel like Diamond and Pearl were highly underappreciated. They did a lot of small graphical improvements. They made things run a lot smoother. They added some more animations for the fight, if I remember, um, mm -hmm. in Diamond and Pearl. They added a lot of new animations. Uh, and it just felt like a little bit more of a fleshed-out game, even though um, it was that same loop that we get every time right. with Pokemon. Yeah, uh, I I'm excited to see what they do with it. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like, I really like the fact that they're taking this chibi style because I didn't I didn't play Diamond and Pearl. I jumped out, like I said, with uh, Steve on that one. Um, yeah. So uh, maybe I'll give this one a, a go because it kind of looks like Link's Awakening to me a little bit, in yeah. terms of yeah. how it's like chibi and like really cutesy. And that just makes me think there's probably going to be really cute chibi memorabilia around this, <laughs> oh, which I mean... Nintendo knows how to sell that, and so does the Pokemon company. So I will be buying it. <laughs> yeah, of uh, course, of course. Uh, and then the final one, which shocked me, shocked me to my absolute core, is that they're actually doing it. They're doing an open world Pokemon game. Uh, oh, they announced it. So uh, yeah, Pokemon Legends Arceus is a described as an open world action RPG that takes place in feudal Japan inspired Sinnoh region. So the same region as pokemon diamond and pearl just set long before any of the the games we know of thus far uh in the short short trailer just showed you know there's a there's different villages you'll come across uh but then like this open kind of breath in the wild breath of the wild inspired environment where yeah. you can go through and see all these different pokemon interact in, in their respective biomes and then while it still has like catching uh and fighting Pokemon, it's it's a little bit different. Instead of going into like switching perspectives into that like locked screen, you're you're still in that open world, but you have to kind of watch them and notice their behaviors, and then kind of try and catch them at the at the uh, opportune time, I guess. Yeah, um, it feels very it, Final Fantasy. Uh, a little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they still have like the the static uh, fights as well with you know their own animations and everything. So they're not taking that much of a deviation from the fights. It's just everything else seems to be you know taking riding off the coattails of the success of Breath of the Wild, which I can't I can't blame them for. Um, yeah, Hunter. And Slug yeah, so this God, game uh, is just saying how it's AKA Breath of the Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, I'll say this. As 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 a far removed fan of like Pokemon, someone who's just like very loosely followed it, mm -hmm. all you need to say when there's a Pokemon game coming out to get me interested is the two magic words, open world. That's all yeah. I need to hear to be like, all right, I'm down to try this. Yeah, and I think even for the hardcore audience that have stuck with Pokemon through generations, like 
we've given up hope for the, that they would do this. I mean, right. they kind of experimented with that with Sword and Shield. They do have that like open world element to it, but it's not to the extent of this. And I, when I played Sword and Shield, I was hoping that they would really drive home that open world experience, but they didn't. And it was kind of a letdown mm. for me. I was like, okay, well, they're clearly never going to do this. Yeah, they just right. everyone wants it, but it just seems like one of those decisions that you know Nintendo and Game Freak were just like, we do, we don't want to do it, so we're not right. going to. So I was shocked. It's so weird. It's so weird too because when you played, like for me, I grew up with the first generation of Pokemon, so you know, exploring that world. That was the best part. I think that's yeah. the best part of any Pokemon is exploring the different yeah. areas and seeing what type of Pokemon you're going to run into. Mm -hmm. So mm. it's kind of like a no-brainer. Why wouldn't you do an open world since exploring is the most, uh, you know, unique thing I feel with Pokemon that really has that charm of like what players enjoy. So I'm I'm glad that they're doing this now. I'm kind of worried though. Oh, yeah. I think my kind of hot take on this is I think Temtem, if you guys remember that title, yep. like the PC yes. Pokemon, I think Temtem did too well for them to not make this game. Mm. I think people who even were like kind of far removed from the Pokemon scene gave Temtem or were tired of the Pokemon scene, gave Temtem a try and were really shocked. And I was personally really shocked with how well it was done, how good that open world feels and how seeing other people with their Temtems and Pokemon in the world, it felt good to see actual people running around with their Pokemon following right. them. It, it right. was, like that's a cool feeling. And if they can capture that and kind of borrow that, I think that even if it's just like a hub world where you can see people. I was going to mm -hmm. ask, is this Pokemon Legends, is it a single player experience? Is it meant to have like some sort of multiplayer element to it? Do you, is there any yeah. information besides it's arriving early 2022? That's it, really. Okay. Uh, it looks to be more of a single player experience. Um, knowing that this is kind of like a testing bed of what a Pokemon spinoff could be in terms mm. of like an open world game. I'm, I'm almost confident that they'll keep it a single player experience and then maybe eventually dive into like some sort of multiplayer component later on with a sequel. Or they may have it, like you know, have your Pokemon Center. You could trade Pokemon with your friends or something like that. Yeah. Like I could see them having those elements um, of multiplayer, if you could even call that multiplayer. Um, but just knowing, especially that this is going to have to run on a Switch, right? Um, and knowing yeah. the hurdles that you know the Switch has with online, I, I feel like this is solely going to be single player. Single player, well. yeah, that makes sense. See, I thought the same thing with the Pokemon centers, but there's some buzzwords in the trailer and when they're describing it that made me think that that's not going to happen because mm. it's an ancient Sinnoh. And because the Pokeballs mm. were made out of wood, if you freeze and look at it, right. the Pokeballs are made out of wood. So I'm thinking that they're going to use that kind of pre-technology as a way to keep it single player and have right. to avoid right. that idea completely. They can say, there's no electricity, you know, it's it's ancient. Cinema, they don't have the so. technology, yeah. Exactly. That makes sense. No, but that, I would, I like you said, I would love to have the trading and everything, but like it's a running on a switch until we get, you know, a switch pro, maybe, right. you know. Yeah, yeah we'll see. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if Nintendo's <laughs> trying to, you know, um, yeah. but yeah, I, it sounds interesting. Uh, and I agree though, because it's running on switch, it's probably going to end up just being a single player experience, which maybe ends up being for the better, just in general, to have like a cool little single player open world RPG. Uh, with Pokemon, like that's, I'm interested. I'm, I'd be down to try that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Early 2022, uh, which is cool. Oh, and I was then, about to ask. Early 2022. That's all. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's not that far. <laughs> no. Yes. Yeah. No. We year. we say like that's a while from now, but it's already March. It. Right. I blinked, oh. and it's March. What yeah. the hell? <laughs> yeah, so in a year's time. We'll be so we'll uh, we'll be there in no time, I imagine. Yeah, and you know the other thing. Nice. Oh, sorry. I, I want to. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Please go ahead. I'm excited. I'm not sure if you guys played Genshin Impact, but like cinematic Pokemon boss fights that look, you know, like that Genshin Impact, big Final Fantasy. Uh, that's gonna. That's what I'm excited for. Mm -hmm. Not just these yeah. static screens that have a changing background. Like actual cinematic right. fights is looks like right. what they're aiming for. But go ahead, sorry. Also yeah. inspired by Breath of the yeah. Wild, Genshin Impact. Even yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, and then the other thing I just wanted to point out that on Saturday uh, evening, they did a uh, Pokemon uh, virtual concert. I don't know if any of you guys tuned in with uh, Post Malone. <laughs> oh. oh, I heard about no, this. Wait, I didn't wait, end up wait, tuning wait. in, but I heard about this. Okay, now, is this safe somewhere? I need to watch. He's kind of like this random person I have a crush on. I don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> He's talented. Can't blame him. He it. is talented. Um, yeah, I no, I, I'm sure you can uh, bring up... Uh, on YouTube, but yeah, it was a 15 minute short, short concert. They completely like mo capped him and animated him into like an animated version of himself interacting with different Pokemon. He was like on a, on a stage and then it like lifted off the ground and it started flying through different like biomes. Well, Charizard was interacting with him and Gyarados was flying over him. <laughs> it was wild. <laughs> That's sweet. Cool. Yeah. That sounds so super cool. cool. And I love that they were able to kind of have something like this, like that celebration with the celebrity factor to make it feel like you're yeah. at a concert. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, I will they... say in general as well, like shout outs, like everyone has their, their qualms with, with Fortnite, but like shout outs to Fortnite mm. for like creating this level, like this kind of movement in games, right. you know, this, yeah, it sets the bar in it. And it also just, it creates like this awesome interactive experience for everyone to enjoy while we're all stuck at home for yeah. the reasons we have to be stuck at home for, you know, to be able to right. sit down and still have like a cool community experience with people. We can all like watch a Post Malone concert in Pokemon. Like that's, that's cool, you know? Right. That's such a weird, <laughs> that's a weird combo. I never expected and to say that sentence Pokemon. in my life. <laughs> I guess that's why the person like working for Game Freak was like, you know who we need? Someone else that starts with a <laughs> <Malone. Yeah>. <laughs> Well, uh, apparently he, he's a huge Pokemon fan. He he brings around a Game Boy Color when he's touring. He plays Pokemon all the time. I think nice. uh, I, I was told he has like different Pokemon tattoos, like. It wasn't just like, hey, who can we tap to to help? Right, he's actually thing. a fan. Exactly. Okay. The only thing that oh, I, I, I did see a there was a tweet out there where somebody had like clipped a moment during one of his songs. I can't remember what song it was, but he was talking about sex and there was like the yeah. Charizard flying over and I'm yeah. like, it's an interesting branding move, but I mean it's post Malone. <laughs> like you can't expect him to go, you know. No. You gotta let him just go. He was performing his own song. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's weird. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, like, it was awesome. his own songs. <laughs> you need a rendition of like Pokemon themes. I mean, I, 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 I was I waiting cool. for it. I was waiting for. I was waiting for that or the theme. It it just ended. I was like, okay, okay, all right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we didn't know we cool. Needed. Um, we got. We didn't know we yeah, needed it. Yeah. Overall, I mean. You know, happy 25th anniversary to Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We think that, okay, well, let me first start with this. Yeah. If you know, we're getting these remakes of uh, Pearl, Shining Pearl, Brilliant Diamond, I don't even mm -hmm. know, um, yep. those ones. But do we need a remake of the original? Like, do we need, what is your favorite Pokemon game that you would want a remake of? So... I was honestly, well, we kind of already did get a remake of uh, Blue and Red with the Let's original. Go. I was all but almost with... under the impression that we would get a Let's Go style of the Johto region this year. Oh. Like, Let's let's Go P, uh, Pichu and um, whatever, like Meryl or something. Yeah. Togepi. Oh, um, that's a good one. Oh, Togepi. Blaziken was the best. I loved Blaziken. He was, was wicked. <laughs> yeah. I to be honest though, I really like the the Diamond and Pearl uh yeah. like starters. Like you get Chimchar, you got Piplup, you got the little turtle dude. Like they're just adorable. Yeah. And then of course they evolve and get better. But I don't I don't I think it would be cool to have a remake, but I'm excited more to see what they do with the future of Pokemon. Yeah. Because I think mm -hmm. that we've had that formula so many times. I think yeah. it's time to just let that yeah. nostalgia go to rest and move on, take Pokemon into a new direction. Whoa, 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 whoa. You mean we we gotta not be nostalgic? We gotta not live in our childhood? We gotta look to the future? You're crazy, I, Molly. You're crazy. I, How no, dare you I, even suggest that? 
<laughs> this, is, this is the last time you guys are going to see me on the show. I know it. <laughs> I enjoyed my time. Thank you so Enabling. much. <laughs> Great. No, but actually, what if we look to the future with something nostalgic? So what if the open world was the original gen Pokemon? That would be. I think that would have been cool to sure. kind of look at because when you go to like, so I had Pokemon Red because, you know, Charizard's the best. Um, so when you were playing that back then, the fact you were able to take a bike. Mm -hmm. You, yeah. you know, you were able to like travel, like it felt like you were on a yeah. journey. It felt like this world was so big um, and you needed that bike to move fast or the flute, you know, um, so to move uh, Snorlax. <laughs> uh, but but it would be cool to kind of revisit that and for them to make that even grander than what it was. Um, but that just may be me, you know, millennial stuck in nostalgia times, uh, hoping to be young again. Um, but yes, I am hopeful for whatever the future of Pokemon is. Will we see other types of iterations of Pokemon? Like, didn't they have that Pokemon Cafe game yep. that was announced previously? I wonder how that's going it's probably making money. I mean, yeah, it's probably like making money game. in Japan. Yeah, probably but doing something. What other types of Pokemon games do you guys think we should oh, have my. out there? For I have no dog See, in this race. I got this. <laughs> we need, what did you buy? We need a <laughs> Gale of Darkness remake. I want I want Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness back. I want a gritty, wow. dark okay. Pokemon game. Uh, I, it needs to happen. I don't think it'll ever happen again, but no. <laughs> that game left such an impact on me. I, that was the moment that I realized Pokemon can be different. It was, mm -hmm. it was Snap and that game where I was like, Pokemon doesn't just have to be this, this formula that we've right. gone through time after time. And even when they did uh, like the treasure hunter one, I didn't even mm -hmm. mind that one. Cause it was like a, it was like a fun quirky idea. I, I like them trying new things. And I think, Pokemon in general and Nintendo needs to have faith that their fans will enjoy them experimenting. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I guess we're, we're kind of seeing that with Cafe Mix. Uh, there's the other, uh, I can't remember what it is. There's another mobile game that came out recently. Yeah, Pokemon Sleep yep. as well. But I mean, <laughs> I, I, I'm, right, I'm right there with you, Millie. Like, when I dipped out of uh, Pokemon, like the core series, I, I just started like picking up all the spinoffs, like Pokemon uh, Pinball, Snap. Uh, I mean, Pokemon Go got me back into it because I was like, okay, this is something really new yet still familiar with, you know, it started out with like the first generation. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah, with like new Pokemon Snap too. Like I, I really like, like when they kind of branch off and explore new things. I mean, I don't know if it's like, I, I want a new uh, Pokemon Stadium something revitalized in that yes. regard mm, yeah that'd be really that would cool. Be cool and i think that's what pokin was trying to be a little um, bit to an yeah. Yeah. a little bit um but stadium that would be really cool but again we're living in that nostalgia right so like is there anything new that we would want to see uh, you know i hear you about the dark and gritty um pokemon maybe you know Pikachu smoking a cigarette and talking in a real man's voice. <laughs> oh my god. Detective, a Detective Pikachu game. Another Detective Pikachu <laughs> game I could get down with. Sure. <laughs> a Detective Pikachu game um, would be good. I'm trying to think of like what genres are out there that would be really cool to see kind of Pokemon take. I want a Battle Royale. I was going to say Battle, Battle Royale. Royale. <laughs> the obvious choice. <laughs> obviously get some you know charizard in there we got yeah. pichu like just get them yeah. all going um you have your upgrades that you need to evolve yo this is writing itself this is <laughs> wow. complete challenge in the battle royale in order to earn the right to evolve you get rare candies okay. yeah you get rare candies but you got to be careful because they're so rare like that's the other thing <laughs> that i used to really i this is the thing with Pokemon. <laughs> rare candies were like really rare. Yeah. Uh -huh. Rare candies are like, oh, we just find them lying on the grass anytime. Come on. Oh, that's where you put change. them. <laughs> <laughs> They're just everywhere now, right? Yeah. We got it. We got to make it uh, unique. But I feel like um, Game Freak should know that they have this brand with so many identifiable characters that whatever they do, fans will play. I think Which is why they have Pokemon Smile and Pokemon Sleep. Would you guys <laughs> you know? play a Telltale Pokemon game? 
Yeah, and you're just exploring different stories. Absolutely. That, I, that sounds I good mean, to me. There's so much lore and so much stuff that's happened over this 25 years. Yeah. Like, uh, Telltale story based games, I think, would do pretty decent. Yeah. Yeah, I want to I wanna learn about the Squirtle Squad. I want to know exactly. Yes. I want to know I want their a whole their Pokemon game right about here. the Squirtle Squad. <laughs> Turtle. Well, and that okay. Let's just talk about that because that actually was a, a, a peek into the truth. If Pokemon were around, they would probably be some trainers that would you know abuse the uh, power of being a trainer, and that's why right. the Squirtle Squad came to be is because mm. they were kind of like abused by their trainers, left left behind all this stuff, right? That's the dark and gritty Pokemon we need. All right, that's the Telltale game that we yep. need, right? Or, you know, yeah. the, the vengeance against that little wiener who left his Charizard out in the rain. I know. <laughs> his Send him to jail. Kind of... <laughs> oh, my God. How did we go from celebrating 25 years of Pokemon to just sadness? Uh, it... That's our show. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just described the Squadcast. <laughs> yeah. We'll take anything happy and make it bleak. <laughs> <laughs> happy monday happy monday happy everyone monday. um no but uh, honestly i think uh and we all know this pokemon's going to be around for probably another 25 years it'll be crazy mm. to think of a time where there is not you know pokemon centers all around japan there's not pokemon plushies in every store around the world um I don't think we'll ever get to that point. Uh, mm. So I just, I can't wait to see what's next with Pokemon. Um, Hunter Slasher says, Pokemon, but Ace Attorney. Oh, okay. Oh. Who, who would be the lawyer Pokemon in all Pokemon? Hitmonchan. Yeah. <laughs> no, what's the one with the, the wig? Oh, uh, uh, what's her name? Jinx, yeah. Jinx, oh, okay. Yeah. She would be a judge, I think. Okay. This yeah. would be Jinx the Judge. Judge Jinx. Jinx, I would Judge watch Jinx. that show. <laughs> <laughs> Judge Jinx. Judge Jinx.